Αγαπητοί μου Χριστιανοί, έρχονται τα Χριστούγεννα. My beloved Christians, the Christmas days are upon us. So, the 40-day period of preparation for Christmas, for the birth of the Savior of mankind, now draws to a close. Christmas is nigh upon us. And we ask ourselves, what have I done? Did I spend the Christmas fast with a deliberate goal of extending more love to others? Or did I squander my time, influenced by the tinsel and the onslaught of holiday advertising? Did I give a dollar or more, a little more willingly, to the dejected beggar woman trying to gather funds to feed her family? Or did I look away, allowing confusing thoughts to enter in, like, is she really in need, or does she really have children? Have I heard of people suffering with illnesses and made a point to visit them, or to write a card, or to bake them a pie? Or did I satisfy my conscience with gladness that we have good hospitals and good caregivers and retirement homes to do that work? Did I make the extra effort to stand in prayer a little bit longer each night for someone I love or for the poor people scattered throughout the world? Or did I assume to leave prayer to some others whom I deem more religious than me? Did I use this opportunity, this preparation period of the 40-day fast, which Christ gives us each and every year, to truly become a better person? Or did I let the fasting period go by like business as usual? Or like a sailor who forgot to put up his mast when a wind came by? My beloved Christians, another Christmas draws near in which Christ again asks us to become holy. <coughs> yes, be holy, Jesus said when he walked upon this earth as your Father in heaven is holy. That's why God became man, you see. He who the entire universe cannot even contain became man, born of a woman, a human being like you and me. He became man so that he could help us again become gods by grace. This is the meaning of Christmas. This is the reason there is indeed extra cheer all around the world these days because of the strange and wondrous miracle that happened 2,000 years ago, the incarnation of God. The virgin birth of the Savior of mankind is indeed the miracle of miracles. The creator of all, of the seas and of dry land, the maker of fish and of fowl, the one who breathed life into his crowning creation, man, asks us repeatedly, day in and day out, to truly become and be his children, like him in every way, giving, giving, and giving again. It's called agape. Perfect love casts out fear, perfect agape, agape that is. Listen to what John, the evangelist of love, says. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Σήμερα η Παρθένος έρχεται γάρ εν πόλη Βηθλεέμ του γεννήσι Ιών των προαιώνων Θεών σώζοντα κόσμο φθοράς. Today the Virgin comes to the town of Bethlehem to bring forth the pre-eternal God as her son, saving the world from corruption. God's love is exhibited not only in the miracles of his birth and his life here on the earth, teaching, preaching, healing, and commanding, nor only because of Christ's self-sacrificial offering upon the cross for our sins, nor merely because of his glorious third-day resurrection from the dead, granting life eternal in his kingdom to all who would but believe. He exhibits his love through us when we love. When we too exercise agape, when we tend to those less fortunate than ourselves, 
when we share our blessings with others, when we weep with those who are weeping, and when we rejoice with those who are rejoicing. This is the true meaning of Christmas. May I extend my deepest heartfelt best wishes to all as we draw near to that special day of honoring God, God who became man, but with a humble reminder that loving Him and loving others doesn't necessarily need a season. Our privilege to love is timeless. Near ones and dear ones, old and young, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Let's hope it's a good year, a year of love, without any fear. Amen. <laughs>